What's up, Brian here. Welcome to the second video on trading futures. In this video, we're gonna talk about capital defense management. In other words, we're gonna talk about how to manage our risk and based on the account size that we have. And we're gonna talk about scaling plans and much more. So let's jump right in and get to it. All right, welcome to lesson two on capital defense management. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about a few things. We're gonna be talking about law of large numbers, how casinos make money, various win-loss scenarios, a scaling plan, and how we can accept our losses. Because it is part of doing business in the stock market. So let's just jump right into it. Here's our disclaimer. This is by, uh, legally, we have to present this to you every time. So first topic is the law of large numbers. So basically, this is how casinos make money. And the law of large numbers, if you don't know what it is, basically it's taking uh, over a large data set, say like thousands and thousands of data points, eventually a certain value is converged upon. So there are certain means that the uh, that whatever you're doing it statistics on, say for example, like the win, the profit potential or probability of a casino, it'll eventually converge towards a certain number. So to give you an example of how that works with casinos, let's just say that you're gambling at the blackjack table in Las Vegas or wherever you are, whatever casino you're at, you put down a hundred bucks and you play for like an hour or two and you've turned that hundred bucks into a good amount of money for get, considering what you started with, say it's like 500 bucks or a thousand dollars. And you're starting to look like that guy, that guy's face in the picture on the left. <laughs> and what do you do? You don't walk away from the table. And this is exactly where casinos make money because they know over the long term, you're going to keep betting. The majority of people are going to keep betting. And what's eventually going to happen is you're going to end up giving back almost all that profit and then eventually become in the red. And the casinos know that you'll do this because a lot of it has to do with your psychology and how gambling can trigger endorphins um, and get your get your endorphins going, get you excited, get you happy, like you're winning money. And next thing you know, you're up a thousand bucks. Now you're down 500 or something because you went to the ATM and put more money in. Um, and this is the majority, pat this is the pattern of the majority of people that actually gamble. And this is why casinos make so much money because this guy gambled and he lost $1.5 thousand dollars. So 1500 bucks he lost, but he's so stoked that he won $1. And that's why people keep coming back to casinos because that it, it gives them a rush. It gives them a feeling like, even though I lost money, that one feeling or a couple feelings of making money, that's what keeps them coming back. And they don't actually realize in the long term they're actually losing money, but the casinos are killing it. Instead of being that guy on the bottom left, so what we actually want to do is take what casinos do and flip it on its head and use it to our advantage as traders. And we do that by making calculated risk decisions with certain entry points with stop losses and profit targets, we're always looking to risk more than, you know, two, three times more than what we're risking in the stock market. And how that works out, and you'll see in this graph on the right, and we'll, this will make more sense when we talk about win-loss scenarios uh, for percentage-wise. So you could potentially lose money in the short term. It's actually the opposite of gambling, where you could potentially win money in the short term, but long term you'll lose money. But the way we approach trading being focused on risk management or capital defense management in this case, you'll potentially lose money in the short term, but long term profits will move towards your expected positive value, um, whatever that may be. So in this graph, you'll see the number of trades on the X axis and you'll keep the losses to a certain value, which is always about at least half of what your average win will be. So in the long term, as long as your win rate, you have a successful strategy, as long as your win rate is above 50%, you're going to make money. We, I guarantee you, and the math just works out. You just have to have faith in that. So next up, let's talk about risk versus reward. And this is where taking what I was talking about, law of large numbers, where over time, our average loss and our average win will eventually go towards certain values and the average win will always be at least two times more. That's what that will be our target, at least two times more of our risk. So let's take a look at different scenarios uh, based on the amount of 
the risk reward we're looking for and the win rate percentage that we actually are getting on average on most of our trades or rather all of the trades combined. So if we look on the left hand side of this table, we have the risk reward. We have one to one. So you're risking a hundred bucks to make a hundred bucks all the way up to risking a hundred bucks to make $500. So you'll see, I've actually created like a, um, an arrow based on, uh, if you go from left to right, your win rate for sale, I only have 20% to 60%, but you'll notice that the higher win rates will be typically more of a scalper. And those will typically be somewhat a trader that gets in and out of the market really fast, uh, seconds to like a minute. And their risk reward is typically one to one or less than that. And as you go towards more of a, a smaller win rate, but you're getting bigger wins, that's more of like a swing trader, position trader, someone that's more patient for bigger levels. And that's kind of, we kind of want to be in the middle of there because as you go to the left more, it requires a lot more patience uh, to, to execute those trades and be okay with not winning a lot, but getting paid big when the trade works out. So we actually, if we notice here, all the way up to, if you risk one to one, you have to make at least 50% to break even, but you'll end up losing money in the long run because you have to pay commissions for each trade, right? So if you aim for anywhere from two to one to four to one risk reward and try to shoot between 40 to 50% win rate, that will put you in a really good position for being a profitable trader. And that's what Kristen and I aim for. Sometimes our win rate is a little bit higher. We try to make two times what we're risking on every trade. Uh, so which keeps you patient, keeps you waiting for levels, and it keeps you profitable in the long term because you know you know that if you lose on one trade, um, it's no big deal because you know two, three, four X trade is coming up and, and it's going to play out and you'll eventually be profitable long term. So we need, as a trader, you should aim for the two to four to one ratios, risk reward, and try to aim for 40, even 40 to 60 percent win rate, which is very, very possible with what we're gonna teach you. So let's talk about accepting losses and trusting your trading plan. I love love this quote from Mark Douglas, who's the author of Trading in the Zone. If you don't or have not read that book, I highly, highly recommend it. He says, losses are simply the cost of doing business. And that couldn't be more true when it comes to the stock market because we have to risk money to make money. You know, And anything in life, uh, you're going to have to risk something a little bit more than you're comfortable with to get some type of gain, some type of reward that you, that will actually change your life, you know, and benefit you in more ways than, than just having a nine to five job, getting a steady paycheck. So, and then let's talk about another quote. Um, this is, that's accepting losses. So now let's talk about trusting your trading plan. This is from another successful commodities trader Ed Sykota. And he says, if you can't take a small loss, sooner or later, you will take the mother of all losses. And what that means is if, if you get uncomfortable taking a loss and it gets to you and you end up getting in the sabotage cycle where you get in this loop where you end up just revenge trading, like entering into a trade right after you get stopped out, you start adding more contracts and you start holding, you add to a loser and it just spirals out of control. And I know because I've been there uh, along with my, in my journey as a trader and it will, it will hurt. You know, it will, you'll take a, a massive loss, sometimes 10, 20 X times more than you expect on the account. And it's not fun recovering from that. So just enjoy getting stopped out and make it, try to affiliate it with some kind of happy thing in your life, because in the long run, no matter what, you're going to have losing trades, but just know that in the long run, you're going to have, you're going to have profitable trades too. So, and you're going to end up making more on those profitable trades than those losing trades. So let's talk about some real life examples of losses that we don't realize. And this might actually help you um, relate a little bit in real life. So real life examples of losses we don't realize include car expenses, such as gas, our car loan payment, we have insurance, maintenance, and this is all stuff that we have to pay just to get to work, just to get somewhere, you know? And people just expect this to be normal and they don't really think about it 
people think about it as a need, um, and it is because you're actually risking or, or investing this much money into your job, into your career, so you can get to work, you know, safely on time. And then you need work appropriate clothes too, so that's another expense uh, that you have to chalk up as a loss. And then cell phone, and there's a lot more things that we have to pay on a regular basis, and we get no return whatsoever from these things. And with the stock market, when you risk your money, you actually have unlimited opportunity. You know, you can make as much as you want. You can grow your account to however big you want it to be. As long as you're willing to accept your loss, accept losses, you know that they're going to come, but know that you're going to make more than you lose on your profitable trades. And just trust that the trading plan, you, you know it works, and just trust in the long run that it, it's going to keep you profitable. Even if for some reason you took a trade and it should have worked, but it didn't. And that's just part of trading. You know, it's not going to work. Some things work all the time, some of the times. Next up, let's talk about how to calculate your risk and let's create some rules. So these are the type of questions that you want to ask yourself. And we have created a spreadsheet for you that based on your account size and certain rules that you input, um, you will be able to calculate your risk per trade. So first one is maximum loss per day, per week, and month. So you need to have this set up, like how much, what's the percentage or dollar amount that you're willing to lose to make uh, at least twice that, you know, each day, each week, each month, you know, and you have to set hard rules on yourself. If you hit those limits, you need to stop trading or take a break. You need to have a plan for that. So max trailing drawdown is like, um, what's the dollar amount or, or percentage that I'm willing to allow my account to go down as I'm making money or wherever I start? Um, say if I have a $10,000 account and I'm only allowing myself a $2,000 drawdown. So once I hit $8,000, I have to have another plan, take a break, um, reassess what I'm doing wrong and try to fix those things. Maximum dollar percent risk per trade. I already talked about that. We have to have a maximum position size based on the account size, and our spreadsheet will calculate that for you, whether you're using the micros or the minis. And number of trades per day. Typically, I try to give myself three to five trades uh, and then try to call it a day and no more trades after that, because if you're not making profit after that many trades, there's a good chance you're not really reading the market well or the market's just choppy and not giving any direction. So there's no reason to get to just to keep trading because the the day's not really working out for you. Next one is when to increase or decrease money risk per trade and position size based on account growth. So our spreadsheet will actually calculate the scaling plan for you based on the new account balance at the start of the trading day. And also you should have a plan of when you should add to a winner and always make sure that you never risk more than your initial amount. And it's always best to add to a winner where you can actually still be profitable if for some reason the, tr the trend or the trade ends up dying out and takes you out of your position. So here's an example. Let's say the account size is $10,000. And we wanna say maximum percent loss per day we're okay with is 2%, which is normal for day trading. And you could even change that to 1% if you feel more comfortable. And the maximum loss per week we're comfortable with is 10%. And the number of losers per day, usually I look at this as consecutive losers in a row. So three of them in a row. The green will actually be the output. And so our maximum loss per day based on those inputs is going to be $200. Our maximum loss per week is 1000 And our risk per trade is two-thirds of 2%, so it's 0.67%. And our dollar amount we risk per trade is about $67. And... Since we're risking $67, we're looking to make at least about $135 on every trade. And I'll cover this in the next slide, but then uh, you'll also be able to select the instrument, futures instrument you want to trade, and either the micros or minis. So let's jump into how to actually use the Price Level Trading's Capital Defense Calculator. And I will be able to demonstrate how to customize the risk parameters for your specific situation or your account size. So here we have the capital defense calculator that I mentioned in the previous videos. So I use this spreadsheet to calculate my 
risk per trade, aka the number of contracts based on the stop loss that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to use the 50,000 top step trader account as an example to show you kind of where I came up with those numbers and in the risk plan that I was just talking about. So there are only three inputs here that I start with. So the account balance at the start of the day, let's just use $50,000 max loss per day that we allow ourselves based on the account size. And instead of 2%, which is the normal that I use on my cash account, I use 1% because the rules on Top Step Trade are a little, a little bit more strict, but they make sense. So we have a max loss of 1% per day. The number of losers per day that were allowed, I have it set at three. So the number of losers per day should be three that we stop trading or we hit the max risk of $500, which is 1% of 50,000. So based on those three inputs, we have a risk per trade of 0.33% and that dollar value ends up being around $167. So step two, we choose the instrument that we wanna trade. Right now I only have NQ and ES set up and I'm just gonna use NQ because that's what we mainly trade. And since we have a decent amount of risks that we're allowed per trade, I'm not gonna use the micros, but I do have it set up for that for a little bit smaller accounts, but we'll select the minis. And let's say we wanna go long at 8,600 with a five point stop at 85.95 and our two hour targets automatically calculated. Just to quickly mention the required input is shaded in yellow and the calculation or the output is shaded in green. So the two-hour target is 86.10, and based on that risk, we have only one contract that we're allowed to trade. But this over here on the right is a little bit more interesting. This is the cool part about the spreadsheet. After you have your risk set up, this is where you start paying attention to where you want to take your profit. And it really makes you focus on taking the at least a two-hour trade, if not more. So step four, we'll calculate profit, profit targets based on the number of R's and number of contracts. So this first one right here, we're looking at the profit target and stop loss with our risk reward in terms of percentage of the underlying account. So if we make two R, that's two times the risk and that's 0.67% of the account. And I have it all set all the way up to 10 R, which is about a little more than 3% of the account. Stop loss obviously stays the same. and the second one right here, this is just what the underlying instrument price should be based on our risk reward. So 2R, we're looking for 86.10 on the NQ and then so on and so forth, all the way up to 10R, 86.50. And the next one is just the same thing, but it's in dollar amounts. So we know how much we're up when we're at those profit targets. And this is the cooler part about this spreadsheet, if you just type in your, your entry and your long or short, this will automatically be calculated down here. You don't actually have to put a stop in because this will have calculated based on your entry and your bias and the number of points you want to use as your stop right here. It'll suggest that or, or rather calculate where your stop loss should be and the number of contracts you can have in that trade per the risk that was calculated in step one. So let's just say if we wanna go short, the same thing. We say we wanna short 8600, our stop will be at 8605. Our two-hour target is now 8590. And you can see that everything else updated appropriately. So it's a really handy spreadsheet to calculate your risk and identify where you should take profit or at least What's the underlying price of the instrument? What's the percentage of the total account and the return? What's the dollar amount you'll be up? And even better, based on a suggested stop loss, how many contracts can you use? And this is on the fly, much quicker than putting the actual stop in. Now let's talk about a future scaling plan. So the goal is to make a certain percentage per day. We don't look at like dollar amounts, but because we, we focus more on the long-term compound interest is based on percentage anyways. So let's just say um, we're risking 1% of our account to trade each day. You should always be aiming to make two times more than you're risking. And that's a rule that Kristen and I stand by. And that's what keeps you profitable in the long-term. Um, so 
Matt, I actually look at this more from a individual trade standpoint. So say if I'm risking 0.5% of my account per trade, my daily goal is going to be to make two times that. So 1% a day of my starting account balance for you're probably wondering. So when do I get to increase the number of contracts? So the position size and instrument you trade mini or micro. So if you don't know, the micro is actually one tenth the risk of a mini. So this will change which instrument you can trade as your position, as your account is growing. And typically I don't see anyone should be trading the minis until about $15,000 in your account balance, say $20,000. But that also depends on how much you're willing, how much you're comfortable risking per day, like percentage wise. And the num and the, the size of the stop loss that you're going to use. So if you play with that spreadsheet, you'll be able to figure out which, which instrument you can trade ES or NQ, either the micro or the mini. You should set drawdown limits to a percentage of your account balance where, for example, if your max drawdown is 50%, when you, you should scale down or take a break from trading for like a week or two. And for example, like scaling down, if you have a drawdown like that, say you're risking 2% a day, day trading, you should cut that in half to 1% until you get your confidence back and you see a, a string of winning trades and you're seeing the market better. And here's an example of why Kristen and I always focus on like not just a dollar amount every day, but trying to get a daily return in percentage wise. So this is a daily return of 1% profit. So say we're risking 0.5% per trade. I'm showing this example for five different account sizes. So we have $1,000 $1, account, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 and $20,000. And this is after only one year of trading days. So there's 200, about 252 trading days. I think maybe one or two more just depends on the year. And this just shows you if you aim. So if you scale up based on your account size and the profits you keep making, your position size will just be correlated with that. So your risk is always going to be the same no matter what, because it's always based on account size. And you can see it's about, it's a little more than a 10 X return at the end of the year. So this is why we aim for percentage per day. And it's always two times the risk per trade that we're taking. If you start with $1,000, you're almost looking at a little more than $12,000. And if you start with $5,000, you're looking at about $61,000. And it, the beauty of, if you put more money in, because the market is very liquid, meaning you can, you can buy more contracts on the minis, because as you get over $10,000 account to $20,000 account, you can, you're more than likely going to be start, start trading the minis. And you can actually trade with larger position sizes and get in and out, no problem. Your strategy might have to change once you start going over 10 lots. But you'll, you'll, once you get there, that's a good problem to have to try to figure that out. And you can see that it scales very well. And you just have to trust the long term. It goes back to accepting losses and trusting your trading plan and focusing on this long-term goal at the end of the year. So if for some reason that you don't have capital to trade with or you have or you're having issues issues mentally to trading your own money like you're not comfortable trading your own capital for any reason maybe you don't have enough saved or you're just you're just ne never finding yourself making good decisions when you're trading with your own money but you do with sim. We are an affiliate partner with Top Step Trader. And if you don't know what Top Step Trader is, it's pretty much a prop firm. So how it works is you pay a monthly payment until you pass step one and step two of their trading combine. And they offer different types, different sizes of accounts. Um, you can trade the micros, but for the minis, they have anywhere from a $30,000 account, they have a $50,000 account, $100,000 account, and a $150,000 account. So you're going to pay the monthly payment, like I said, until you pass both step one and step two of the trading combine. And then once you pass the trading combine, you only pay for data fees, which is per instrument that you, that you want to trade. And once you get there, we can talk about it further. And how it actually works is you keep 80% of your profits and the other 20% goes to top step trader. And the only thing I didn't cover here is that the, uh, the 60, 40 rule of ta the tax benefits of trading futures doesn't apply here.
you get paid as a contractor, so you have to fill out a W-9. And I also forgot to mention that the first $5,000 in profits is all yours, so you don't have to pay the other 20% to Top Step Trader, and then everything after $5,000 in profits, the 80-20 split applies. So like I said, it's a great option if you don't have capital to trade with, or for some reason mentally, you don't wanna risk your own capital. Um, it's a great option and it's very affordable and it's an amazing opportunity, I would say, uh, for anyone that's looking to trade other people's money. And I provided the link to sign up for, the first one will be for the minis. And then if you wanna trade the micros, you can click the second link. And if you sign up through these links, you'll actually save 20% off your monthly fee. And that's good for every single month until you're funded. Lastly, I want to talk about how trading is a business. So we should treat it like one. And you actually are the business. You are the coach. You are the, the financial person. You are the marketer. You, you literally are everyone in this business. You make all the decisions. So you have a you have to be able to realize that you are an entrepreneur and this is a, a business that you are in charge of. Um, and I want to make sure that you understand that trading is not gambling. And this is like a topic that can go down a loophole with a lot of people that don't understand trading at all. And they'll just assume that trading is not gambling. It's usually just because they're not educated in the subject. And how I look at trading is, or at least my definition of it is, Trading is taking calculated risk based on sound analysis with a potential for higher return. So gambling is not the same way. Gambling is there's no plan whatsoever and you're just throwing money at it with the hope and hope that you're going to win some money. And there's a lot of luck involved uh, more than the average uh, profession or anything you do in life. Um, there's no plan. You ha there's no way to decide what to do. You, you're at the mercy of whatever the, the casino is doing they set the rules you set the rules in trading so you're in control of it so that's why you need to focus on your long-term picture and not daily results so don't get caught up on the intraday results because that it's not going to be good for you mentally and just know that's a long-term game just focus on a couple of years out and i promise you it'll be worth it so let's do this guys let's talk about psychology next and kristen's gonna she's gonna blow your mind with all this amazing content that she put together. And I think this probably is the second most important class, but the psychology one, I think you're going to find the most benefit from because being a successful trader is a lot of it has to do with capital defense management, but even more so is knowing yourself and knowing who you are and knowing about your psychology, being self-aware and a lot of other stuff. I'm going to pass it off to Kristen for the next lesson. All right. So that covers lesson two on capital defense management. And the next course we're gonna be talking about is trading psychology. And Kristen will actually be teaching you guys this. And it's an extremely powerful, very important class. So make sure you don't skip over this one. And let's jump right into it. And I'll pass it over to Kristen right now.